Hello and welcome, I am Karinex and this is Dark Souls 3. We are back in Firelink Shrine. Just after we have, at the end of the last episode, defeated the Dancer of the Boreal Valley. And that is something I am very happy about. Especially since it took me like four attempts to, at long last, to beat that boss. That is the second of the three big base game nemesis taken care of. And in terms of the Lord of Cinder, only Lufric remains. And it will be some time before we'll actually square off against him and his brother. Our next destination is going to be Lufric Castle. And I suppose I'll focus on dealing with the castle grounds first. And after that, delve down into the consumed king's garden. Or uh, should I deal with the gardens first? No, I think I will clear the castle first and then the gardens. Because they are a comparatively smaller area and also clustered with two buses almost back to back. I could use a break after dealing with the dancer. <laughs> Well, and then I suppose there is another hidden area, of course, on the Arch Dragon Peak. Yes, I dare say where we find ourselves now, right in this particular episode, number 34, if I'm not mistaken. This marks about the halfway point in our journey. Alright, with that being said, though, we should get back on the trail. There's nothing for me to do here. Well, aside from item descriptions. You know, good child, I should take a look at them for a brief moment. Among them, now in our possession, a Titanite slab. Which allows reinforcement of a weapon to the highest level. Plus 10. Well, plus 5 in the case of the special weapons. Because unlike in the previous installments, they still require slabs to become plus 5. Anyhow, Titan and Slam for Weapon Reinforcement, said to once belong to the gods. Reinforces weapons to the highest level. Titan and Slams are smithing materials of the gods, and weapons reinforced with slabs will be admired no less than the precious legendary weapons. Yeah, plus 10 weapons certainly makes a major difference between what you start out with. I do appreciate that compared to the previous games, DS3 is fairly balanced in these manners. I'm saying that having just uh, finished the DLC area of DS1, my concurrent playthrough of friends. Well, no. Basin of Vows, we received that toward the end as well. After Emma died, the chalice is used in old ceremony in which Lothric knights take their vows. This is only a formality now, but it remains as an empty practice. Place this basin at a statue for beheading knight. And the one behind Emma. And of course, there's also all the keys that I had found within. Aerofield Dungeon. The Chela's keyring for one. Open the most cell doors and what grounds to remain imprisoned, considering that by now they are minded hollows or unrealized gibbering folds. Well, so are the Chela's, I presume. Well, it's a key to the barred window in Aerofield Dungeon, full of the red at once before. Or did we? The window only leads to a bottomless black pit below, and above a paltry view of the ruined profaned capital. And the very architecture appears to be a cruel choke. The Chilas played and would be escapees. Certainly isn't a place you can easily make your escape from. It's pretty much the Azkaban of the Dark Souls world. The old Zelda key. To the oldest cell in the Irrefill dungeon. 
the first prisoner of the dungeon was... Yes, Salon the Giant. We've read this one before, I recall. This is the key that we used to break Sigwood out of his cell. Shame he couldn't be the one to finish his quest, though we did it for him in the end. I want to have acquired a couple of new spells. So just Great Soul Arrow and its heavy Great Variant. Well, Great Heavy Variant. Many sources inflict the magic damage, making them effective against iron armor, tough skills, and other physically resilient materials. Sorceries are logical discipline, and their strength influenced by the caster's intelligence. Ironic you're telling me that, because the damage scaling compared to their standard heavy soul arrow and soul arrow does not in truth end up to the increase in FP cost. From a purely statistic point of view, as a sorcerer, there is no point to swap for me the soul arrow or heavy soul arrow to the navy blue great variant. Because the increase in FP cost does not really justify what a little improvement is see in terms of damage. Of course we've got the farm dart at long last, a variation of soul arrow developed by sorcerers of the Undead Legion of Faron. I believe we've had that on in our possession for some time in truth. But now we also have the great Faron dart. A sorcerer which improves upon Faron dart. Entrusted to the leader of the Legion's Acolytes and apparently a sorcerer of his daughter, Hazel, that is refined by a crystal sage. Now, his Faron Dance don't really do much in the way of the damage, but they carry with them quite a lot of force in terms of poise damage, so they are useful for sorcerers to punish people running away and trying to heal. Faron Hail fires a cascade of soul doubt. Entrusted to the leader of the Legion's Acolytes, and apparently a sorcerer of his daughter Hazel, that is defined by, once again, the Crystal Sage. Yeah, it's the spell the Yellow Finger Hazel also uses in PvP. As an invader, I mean, homing soul mass, that's a returning one from the previous schemes, as a soul spear. And we've got the soul great sword. Sorcerer developed primarily for sorcerer swordsmen. Attack with a great sword formed from souls. And the ephemeral blade only exists as an extension of the caster, but its power is said to rival that of physical great swords. Even the most obstinate magic purists will resort to this spell in times of crisis. Yeah, these. Soul, great sword, found flash sword, and all of these. They're very interesting spells to use, though they have one caveat. And that's that your catalyst can, in point of fact, be parried and you can be reposted if you're too close. Well, anyway, we also have great magic weapon, of course, great magic shield. The only sorts of swordsmen with special duties are permitted the use of the spell which temporarily grants even the smallest of shields fortitude and more akin to that of a great shield. Yet yeah, it gives you 35 more points of stability and immediately increases every absorption to 100%. Even a flimsy plank shield could be made to fully withstand the uh, even the fire breath of like Donkey to Medea if you were to use it against him. And if you manage to actually boost the shield to 100 stability using this, you don't even take stamina damage. Could be positioning yourself in a doorway and as long as the spell holds. Effectively, well, you'd become an unsurmountable bulwark. However, compared to the 60 second base duration of magic shield, or 90 seconds I believe if you use the Lingo Dragon Crest ring, this thing has like 40 seconds at most even with the Lingo ring on. I know, because I quite frequently use this particular spell against Dark Eater Media. <laughs> Maybe this time around we'll just settle for using the magic shield though. The Black Knight shield is pretty powerful. A lot more so than what I usually use in terms of shields. 
Yes, I went on a bit of a shopping spree of some spells. As after all, we need to clear the Orbex inventory in order to progress this quest. I also have the profaned flame in here now, which I'm certain is new. Pyromancy deriving from the profaned flame engulfs foes at the range and burns them to ashes. The profaned capital was consumed by fire after Yorm the Giant became a lord of cinder. The fire born of the sky is said to have incinerated naught but human flesh. I wonder what that is all about. What exactly Yorm was looking to accomplish by burning the profaned capital. Either way, the implication of the profaned flame itself appears to be... There is a kind of a merger between both the fire and the abyss. An interesting concept, just as well as this is an interesting pyromancy, because indeed it conjures a projectile at a target location which explodes, sending foes flying. Very fun in PvP if you manage to hit, because if you're lucky enough to play, you should spawn behind them and then causes them to be propelled toward you. Wrath of the Gods, I believe this could be new. An epic tale, well, forces but a woefully incomplete version of the Dian. And this primal account of profound fury meant a shockwave that also inflicts damage. Ah, yes, and of course, I bought some things off of Carla as well. The protection and. Well, nothing else. Aside from a port, an advanced pyromancy of Quilana, a daughter of the Witch of Isolith. I like all the icons of the spells that had been in the game since the first one pretty much look completely the same still. Just with a bit of a high definition retouch. No, apologies. Right, Advanced Pyromancy of Quilana, a daughter of the Witch of Isolith. Charms the enemy, making them a temporary ally. Yes, for the 30 seconds. The living are loaded by flame, and this tendency is elemental to the art of pyromancy. I look forward to using that. I need to get my vitality to 20, then my intelligence to 15, and... and then we shall get the strength to 20 as well. I'm kind of scuffing myself in terms of damage a bit. Though when that deed is done, I want to upgrade my Vigor and Attunement as well. Get Vigor to 30, Attunement to 24. Wanna see how that pans out. I mean, stats should be relatively fine. Though I'm certainly missing out on terms of damage with having my Dexterity and Strength reduced at this point this late in the game. Something to think about, but alas. I believe we also have some new weapons. We certainly have the Eleonora, which is an axe. Here it is. A strange weapon found among malformed inhabitants of the profaned capital. The profaned flame is triggered by the curse of these women, relatives of a certain oracle, but despite the culpability, they went on living without any cares. Feast Bell. Hold up axe and wave, trim the solemn chime to temporarily make weapons lacerating. And to restore HP for each hit. I feel as though the item description is making reference to a... A certain faction that I'm not particularly familiar with. Oh, and of course we've never taken a look at the Alva set either, have we? And the Murakamu, which doesn't even seem to have a proper handle. And the curved greater of Alva, seek of the spurned, especially fortune in the eastern land. Sharp but heavy, and the sword requires extreme strength and a dexterity to wield. And the search for the spurned had no end. And so the wave igniter warm to a most deformed weapon. And has a spin slash, as curved great swords tend to do. Alva 2 is 
at least in the mentioned sense of returning character from Dark Souls 2. Him and the witch Tsully. Which reminds me, I do believe we have read the armor's description at least. And we have also found the gargoyle flame, spear and the soldering iron. A stone torch spear wielded by gargoyles of the profaned capital. The profaned flame, which never goes out, imbues this weapon with a fire attack. And of course it has a charge ability with added fire effects. We've just about the stats to wield it. Looking at the magic stats for it as well. And of course the soldering iron, which is a rather curious weapon. Branding iron used by the Chela's prowling Irvil dungeon. Press its young tip against foes to inflict fire damage and temporarily block Esther's healing. Does that mean the actual... I've never used this weapon so I have no clue, but does that mean that one of its attacks would actually have an effect similar to the Ended Hunter charm then? Or perhaps it's tied to the weapon art? I have no idea, to be told. We also have the Tailbone Spear and a number of other things, including rings, but... Another time. We've been taking quite a bit already. Before moving on though, I do briefly wish to test out the soldering iron. What is your moveset going to be like? Very much like a spear. If this truly blocks Esther's recovery, it would have a visual effect tied to it. That is something we ought to be easily able to test using the hollows outside. Yeah, I want to take a drink of the water here. I've had the absolutely Amazing idea. Hmm. Yes, it does seem to do something. Do you see the lingering effect on that hollow? Just checking to see its duration. Lasts a decently long time, doesn't it? But yeah, as I was saying, I had the absolutely incredible idea today to drink an entire one and a half litre bottle of sugary soda. And now my saliva has become more weird. Makes talking a bit uncomfortable to be told. Hmm, I'm doing that wrong. This time I did it right. Extending the charge. If you do it at the right time, it should go even further, yeah? No, I suppose I need to do it a bit early on. Yes, I need to do it much earlier. Almost at the start. Feels a bit different from the... from most other lances that have the charge ability, I think. I have to compare it with something that does. There. Yeah. Try the Kindle charge, for instance. But I think normally you're supposed to be able to extend the range of the charge much later in the animation, not as early as that. No, you are very much the same. Well, that's a fancy one. Perhaps I'm just imagining things. Could always try you. Oh, it's making me all the way uh, overweight. Being overweight in Dark Souls 3 doesn't actually feel that heavy, does it? In terms of just walking around. 
Yes, the footsteps have a bit more away to them, but you don't clank about as annoyingly as you do in the previous games. Yet you will notice it when you're trying to roll. And the stamina region is effectively eliminated. Yes, see, on this one I'm able to uh, activate the... Uh... Yeah, I'm not imagining things. Not at all. I'm not telling you bullshit after all. Look at this. I can activate the uh, extension of the charge almost at the end of the animation still. Whereas with the other two CPS I just tried, I had to do it at the start, otherwise I would just transition into <laughs> a completely run of the mill R2. Curious. Anyway. It is at the time that we move on into Lofra Castle. It feels strange to be going back all the way to the beginning of the game. Yeah, but here we are. The nature of Lofric is murky. Indeed it is. Just to have a final look outside of here. And this is the state of the world that it is now in. Will you be able to walk close enough to me to aggro? Yes, you will. Your funeral. And onward we move. Now we're getting to that point in the game where having access to a report would be amazing. I think I might actually just uh, very quickly prioritize getting my intelligence to 15. Because Lothric Castle and the Grand Archives after them have a lot of annoying enemies that can be reported and turned against each other. It'll be a pleasure to use. Yes, so also I'm not sure of what kind of vows this is symbolic. But I will say, good Lufric, this is some screwed up ceremonial stuff. I can't imagine all of this fancy setup and effort. Just to pop down the ladder. It's not even a great Sabella or anything, it's just. a ladder. A metal one, very stood and heavy, true, but. it's a ladder. <laughs> this entire elaborate contraption for a ladder. And even, we shouldn't even need the ladder, because, lo and behold, there are these winding staircases off to the sides. Which, of course, we cannot... It's an invisible wall here, which we cannot use ourselves. But you'd think, no? Will you look at them? The staircases winding the way, up, uh, way upwards. They're like the ones we saw in the Cathedral of the Deep. The one leading up to the final palais before fighting the Cathedral uh, Deacons. But come on, this clearly leads up all the way, doesn't it? The ladder really is just here for enhancing effect. Try rolling. I wonder, can I position myself between them in a way? Uh, doesn't look right. I was hoping to sort of clip them with a backstab and break them, but doesn't even seem to be possible. <laughs> Apparently you can't backstab into them. But rolling works, of course. Anyhow, it's well at the time that we continue. To our left lies the entrance to the Consumed King's Garden, 
which we'll do our utmost to ignore for the most part. With the exception of one thing. There's an Estus shard almost by the entrance over here, and it would be unwise of me not to take it. And so speaking of the Cathedral of the Deep, it seems as though the Cathedral Knights are returning. Some of that little detail elapsed my mind. If we're standing on this bridge right now... Yes, there it is. Up that way, and this other bridge there. And that would be the next boss room. Anyway, you're gonna take some time to get the shield down, so I'll just slip behind you. And then get myself hit in the face. Quite as dastardly the fight as the ones using the great swords. That variant will also be running into again. Oh, joy. And yes, you didn't have a toxic swamp. Because one poison swamp isn't good enough in the game. They had to put two sections of toxic swamp in it as well. Um, yes, this. Esther's shard. And these fun enemies are returning too, yes. And the post of men that we've already faced on the high wall a long time ago. There's no need to square off against any of that now, we shall just hop back on the elevator and be in our merry way. And put on the silver cat ring. Or just land on the roof of that elevator. Perfectly safe. Oh, uh, but this isn't... No, no, get me out of here. Now, onwards. We have left the castle to explore. That's a very slow-moving elevator. I don't want to go any deeper into this particular area for the time being. Is there anything on the right side? No. Only betrayal. Stone cold betrayal. Because the, the walls of the castle are made of stone. That's a very funny joke. Yeah, this will be fun. Yes, turn around, that's fine by me. There's still not... Oh, I'm using sniper bolts on this one. And I bought new uh, standard bolts, didn't I? <laughs> yes, I did. Completely forgot about the fact that I had been using sniper bolts. Oops. Well, reminds me I'm going to need to uh, swap this weapon sometime in the near future. But for now we have something else to worry about. At least there's no priest that can buff this guy this time. Still don't particularly like fire damage. A small blessing. Large titan at shards. Wonderful. So yeah, this priest can heal enemy knights 
and also buff them with the Sacred Oath, which increases both the defenses and attack. An experience we want to avoid under any circumstances. And this is a shortcut back to the boss, as far as I recall. Yeah, it is. Can actually see the bottom of the elevator shaft. I did not hide it well this time. Mm. And there's one and a half liters of soda, but not a good idea. And there's some major acid reflux going on right now. Anyway, this next area also has... Some of the fanboys in it. At least I think I'll be easily able to get the uh, shield one out here. Alone. There's another knight in there and a priest. That's how we do it. And you gave me a shield and a beer. That's good. Be gone. No, all that is left to deal with is you. Oh. Nice to see they can still be stun locked just like earlier though. At least we won't have to deal with this particular free zone here again. Because just after this section there is another bonfire. Yes, so you may hide. But you'll need to do better if you wish to succeed at it. It's right here. And up here we now are. Well above the room with Emma inside of. This is some horrible placement. Imagine you would want to watch someone fight the boss from the um, from up here. Not that this is what they this entire building is for, but you know, just saying, the the balcony would make for a horrible view of whatever is happening down below. Not the very expensive and ornate things here. In any case, also frame rate drops. Right, the prayer set, I will take that with me. There's nothing in here, truly. Could have fooled me. Uh, I'm confusing with Anna London from the first game, but there's a hidden fireplace. We will find the Havel set inside of. And chunks. We are officially getting chunks. We're also getting some uh, old friends. And kicks evidently don't get along that well. There's an archer up there that I might want to take care of right away. Not an archer, but someone who throws a. Uh... Mm, can't really hit him from here. 
Yes, Undead Hunter jumps, that's what he's throwing. I have a plan though. Wait, I can use you. <laughs> You're about to be in a world of pain. I hope you realize that. You dodged it. Well, I have one of these. Good enough. I need to drop the bow again though. What exactly is your... You also do puncturing arrow. Which I'm pretty sure is essentially the same thing the... Uh, yeah, the longbow has. Just more powerful. You being out of my way is already a great help. Next thing to worry about... These people. Well, worry is very relative. I will not go inside there just yet. I don't want to get too close to the arbalest. Because there's a few of these big guy friends coming up ahead. It'll just be rather annoying to deal with. Oh, ah, hello. Still around, are you? You guys have become stronger since we've last met. This game is really telling me to upgrade my gear now, isn't it? You thought you would succeed. Yes, come closer to me. That's a smart one. <laughs> this makes it easy for me to hit you. Uh, we'll progress a bit further into the area for now and get to the one shortcut that loops back around. Well, not shortcut, but the uh, bonfire, the dragon barracks. this place. And already someone appears to be here as well. Good for them I suppose. This just allows me to easily teleport back here in the future, not having to worry about all of these guys again. They're giving us rather a lot of bonfires now, aren't they? Anyway. We are about to face off against a rather difficult foe. Very big on stun draining. I should prepare adequately for it. This will be more useful to have. I will also want to reapply my Carthus Flame Arc naturally. Make sure I'm topped off of you and get one of you ready. Let's go then. Calm down here, will you? After a decent start.
That was a risky one. But it worked. Yes, the Winged Knights return as well. Of course, there wasn't just going to be one of them in the game. But I should be able to manage them well enough. At least I've got a faster weapon. Yes, indeed. This leads us to the Winged Knight set, and also a very amazing painting of a Winged Knight. For whatever reason, that is here. There's a fat man inside of a Winged Knight uh, outfit with sandals on for some reason. <laughs> Well, not exactly my choice of bedroom decor. Ah oh, yes, this is where we are, right above the room where we had just been. And the sacred bloom shield. This is one of the two items in the game that can parry sabelles. And now we return down yonder. Where do we? Maybe getting the area confused here. Don't think this is it, is it? No, I think this is just as a way of allowing us to lead back down here. It's confusing with a different balcony later on in the area. That will also have some enemies surrounding it. Anyway, let's carry on. There's still a few things to take a closer look at within the earlier sections of the map here. And I'm very curious as to who you are. Orator. Completely dressed as a sunbro. Though you seem to be using a different kind of shield. Looks like the shield of want, together with the Astora Straight Sword. Which reminds me, in this area we will be able to find the Sunlight Blade. One of the most useful uh, little trinkets to have. For corporate reasons, anyway. That weapon is oddly shining against the background here. But this guy is very much not alive. You, on the other hand, my friend. Well, it has been some time. It has been some time indeed. It's about to get very noisy in here. As long as we don't venture too close, there should be breathing fire though. Good. My eardrums will be spared yet. Oh, is this for a uh, thumbnail shot? Reminds me of the opening to Final Fantasy VII. Anyway, yes, the vibe that we chased off of the high wall has returned. With a friend in tow. I shall deal with them in due time. For the time being, there are still things to explore on this side, though. Name of this friendly knight over this way. I'm putting friendly in quotation marks. go. And the Great Lands, which is a truly Great Lands. Could this be misfortune? <laughs> well, we'll need a way to deal with these uh, dragons, and since I noticed that the Great Bow I have on me, and the only layer one, appears to make short work of them. Um, 
I'm mixing two sentences together here. It appears you can wield it, and I imagine the heavy arrows will make sure to work of them. Which is why we will now return to Firelink Shrine for a moment. I need to end the episode anyway, and we've got some things to take care of. Such as turning in under Esther's shard. Uh, we had like three heals at the start of the game. Look at us now. We also have more than enough to level up once, but I will temporarily refrain okay. from doing that. I meant to upgrade my Esther's shard. Yeah, so we'll refrain from leveling up for a moment. Is that going to help? Yes, it did. Pretty like that. How many do I have? Five? Oh, good enough to get yeah, you to plus one. eight. And to more damage, you do it again. Right. Oh, I should upgrade the bow as well if I can. Which is one. Oh uh, yes, you. I'm eventually going to be able to use the Dragon Slayer one as well. Hmm. Your double D, your version strength of bat and dexterity. For the time being, that'll make for a stronger weapon to be sure. The both of you require Twinkling Titan to upgrade. Well, I guess the only Slayer one looks more interesting in a way, doesn't it? Plus three would be fine. Of course, I don't have the Twinkling Titan to do so. Plus four would be fine, but no, actually, since I have a plus eight weapon. But it's fine already. You're quite powerful as you are. Pretty, I got that. However, I still require arrows. You know about leaving for another round of thieving. Oh. Oh yes, there must rest. be something of use in Lothric Castle. I I'm aware of the danger. That castle is a death trap. Not a single man has returned from the castle unscathed, even back in the day. But I don't want to sit around and die a petty rat. And I consider myself your friend. Yes, I understand. You don't wish to sit around to become hollow. You wish to have a purpose. And purpose... I shall grant you for one last time. Thank you for placing your trust in me. <laughs> don't you worry. I know Lothric like the back of my hand. <laughs> Farewell, Greyrat. But before you go... I will be able to purchase these things later once I turn in his ashes. And it's a grim fort. Hmm, not that I think about it though. The food is 6k, yeah. Ah, bother. Be more useful to have these at the moment. Well. So long, Grey Rat. Goodbye. I will leave for some time. So long for now. Do stay safe, you hear? Or my efforts will have been for naught. <laughs> On the hand of my insults. On his layer arrows, which is what I'm going to buy. Perhaps I should stock up on some souls beforehand. That's 10k. Should be good uh -huh. enough. Why are you more ex You're more expensive, but you do less damage. Why? Doesn't really make sense, does it? And we have 20 to 30. Can't sell me another ten. 
Thank you. I'll need a bolt as well from a crossbow to be sure. Speaking of, you're plus five, you're plus six. You don't count. I have a lot of large type in that shard, so I should get that as far as I can with the large ones I for now. One. Where are you? There you are. Yes, so now you're plus six Where as well. And the dragons will be made short to work off this way. But I'll have to wait until the next episode. <laughs>